What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards of Comics here. Weekly sports card market update delayed a day. I know, I know. Y'all love the Sunday video, but got to push it back a day. I am on the road at the Chantilly show. More to come on that later this week. Recording from the laptop, and just to be frank, the weekly sports card market update is not an easy video to record while traveling. Uh, I was just going to actually skip today completely, but right after we had a Beckett video on Friday, we have a, another Beckett video today as they posted a little Instagram really real. Uh, one Mr. David Poole, BGS Director of Graders and Head Trainer, to announce that they have no announcement about the grading scale change. I shouldn't say that. The announcement is, is that nothing Nothing will change. So for those that don't remember, a year ago now, they an image leaked and it, it went all back and forth and haywire about actually, oh yeah, over a year that the grading scale was going to get shaken up at Beckett. You know, some nine fives were going to go to tens. A bulk of them weren't. That pissed a bunch of people off. The whole thing went sideways. They said, okay very quickly backtracked on that and said, all right, we're going to talk to some people and reevaluate this situation. And they did. Uh, and then time went on and they made no announcements. Nothing was discussed. Nothing was clarified. And people were kind of left wondering whatever happened with that. And finally, today, uh, almost a year later, over a year later, we finally have a decision that they are not changing the grading scale. Um, good on them to finally actually come out and say something. Uh, so that's not lingering in the wind. I think at most at, at this point in time, most people just assumed nothing was going to change. I had heard a while ago that nothing was going to change, but they didn't want to make a public statement about it. Finally, they've come to their senses and said, hey, we should probably get out there and actually say something about this. So good on them for that. Credit to them for that. It, you know, fingers crossed. They seem to be listening because that was one of the things I know personally. I've discussed numerous times and other people have of like, hey, what's going on with this? You know, you guys thought about shaking the snow globe. Did you ever decide to shake it or not? Now, is this the right decision? That's the interesting part. And what does this kind of tell us about what to expect out of Becca going forward? Well, that's the tricky part. And here's why. The... In my opinion, the right decision would be to reset the grading scale, to switch 9.5s to a gem mint 10. I'm, I'm not going to get into the weeds on how to accomplish that. It's been discussed enough over the last year. But they should have moved off a 9.5 to a gem mint 10. The problem is that it's twofold. One, I feel like Beckett listens too much to the old school, which on one hand I get, like they're the people that have supported you all this time, but what it ultimately comes down to are the people that you're listening to are the people subbing with you or the people that own a lot of your slabs? Because I feel like the vocal minority that has Beckett's ear doesn't necessarily grade with them, but they have a high percentage of Beckett slabs in their inventory. And they were concerned that, you know, let's say you're a big BGS pristine collector or a black label collector. And all of a sudden there's going to be more Beckett tens in existence, even if they're not pristines or black labels because a nine five goes to a 10 you may now feel threatened. And, and I, I feel like that's a portion of what part of the problem here is. The other part of the problem is it would be a major undertaking for Beckett to switch their grading scale, even though I think it is the right long-term decision. The problem is, is in the short term, that would be a very heavy lift. They have a, this isn't like when CGC did it. When CGC did it, they had barely been a grading company for a year. They didn't have decades worth 
of pop report of stuff graded of things on the pop report of, of cards out there it's a whole different ball game for beckett to switch a grading scale like i said even though i think that was the right decision to make the lift on that the amount of work that would have been involved was way more beckett barely has a functional pop report as is could you imagine if they switched the grading scale all of a sudden and they had to account for that somehow but we got to this point because of their lack of inaction over the last three to four years. That's what ultimately is the problem. They, we talked about this on Friday. They are trying to play catch up because whatever it was, the old management team, the old guard, the people they replaced, the people that replaced the people they replaced felt like they didn't need to do anything, didn't do anything didn't say anything, just kind of had cards come in the door and had cards go out the other door and collected the grading fee in the process and just was basically a rudderless ship uh, for a long time there. Or if there was a rudder, they weren't doing anything publicly. And now they have this institutional debt that, you know, this new team, in air quotes, tries is seems to be trying to get them out of there, which, which once again, I applaud them for actually putting communication out. We've had more communication in the last two days from Beckett than we've had in the year combined from Beckett. So, you know, props to him for that. But they have such a hole to dig out of. And that is ultimately the problem. They are set up to basically be stuck in where they're at because they have so many fires that they need to put out. They need to fix their customer service. They need to fix the security on their slab. They need to fix their turnaround times. They need to lower prices. They need, they, they're in the process of fixing their communication. In my opinion, the grading scale need fixed. The problem is they had 15 other things they need to fix in addition to the grading scale. And is the grading scale the most important thing on that list? It's the most public facing thing, but the infrastructure is bad, if that makes sense. So, I, I can see both sides of this. I understand why they probably didn't end up going this route, though I do feel like in the long run, this is ultimately going to cost them. Uh, it's already, it's it's been costing them, along with all those other items that we discussed. People want a 10. It's as simple as that. I've, I've said this in the past. The amount of times that I've had to explain how Beckett's grading scale works in comment sections and in videos would astound some of you that like actually get it. The amount of times I've had to explain that a BGS 9.5 is the same thing as a PSA 10 is the same thing as an SGC 10. And they are a prisoner to the subgrades to a degree. That's, that's part of what hamstrung them in changing the grading. So now they let themselves be hamstrung with once again, I feel like, the feedback that they're getting is people that are vested in their own self-interests and not in the actual improvement of Beckett as a company moving forward into the future. That's, that's the vibe that I got personally. So we'll see what happens from here. Once again, a, a good on them for at least coming out and finally bringing stability to this. Unfortunately, this should have been something they did nine, ten months ago when they made up their mind on this. Um, you know, they could spin it however they want, that they've been, you know, con seriously considering this this whole entire time. It doesn't take you a year to figure this out. Now, they did have, you know, Kevin came in, Kevin Isenson came in right as, shortly after that grading scale debacle came down, but it still doesn't take months and months and months after the fact to do that. And that was under his watch when, you know, it was under Canals for when it went haywire the, initially, but it finished under Kevin's, and he'd been there for a while now. That was probably eight, nine months ago since he's taken over. We could have had communication on this way sooner than this. So I guess it is what it is at this point in time. Beckett's just going to be Beckett, for lack of a better term or statement. They're going to just keep doing their thing. They're going to keep grading their, you know, probably 60 to or 50 to 70,000 cards. 
They're still going to have a niche in TCG. They're still going to have a niche in RPAs, in 90s stuff. Beckett still gets a lot of high-end cards submitted to it. They have a very loyal following, but that following is going to continue to age. Beckett did not capture this new generation. This new generation treats Beckett as the third place grader, especially in sports. The new generation loves PSA, and a portion of them have an affinity for SGC, and then, you know, spread it out from there. They didn't grow up with the history of Beckett. They don't care about Dr. James Beckett. They don't even know who he is, probably a lot of these people. That's a big problem, and that's a problem that they did not address with this change. So... We'll see what happens. Uh, we will catch you guys later this week. I'm going to wrap it up there. Weekly sports card market update on Monday. Some sort of Chantilly video on Tuesday. And then probably like a wrap-up slash, I don't know, state of things. Like I said, uh, I have a lot of thoughts. My head's really spinning uh, coming out of this Chantilly show on a multitude of different topics. So... That's probably going to dominate most of the week this week outside of anything crazy that happens and pops up in the wonderful world of cards, comics, and whatever. So have a good rest of your weekend. Catch you boys and girls on the next one. Peace.